Okay, good morning, everyone, and I'm delighted that you can make it to this short course. I'm excited about the topic that we're going to be exploring this morning, and then uh, those of you who are in the workshop over the, the subsequent four days. So my task um, right now is very simple, and it is to introduce our first speaker, who is a fellow co-lead of this endeavor, uh, Dr. Carol Raymond, who got her PhD at Columbia University, came to JPL and was deputy chief scientist for the New Millennium Program, focused on advanced technology development. She is now the deputy principal investigator of the Dawn mission to Vesta and Ceres, and also manager of JPL's Small Bodies Program. So with no further ado, I will turn it over to Carol. And I am told to give you the mic. All right, so um, I just have a, a couple of slides to sort of get us, I'm kind of like the warm up act because the, the, the subsequent speakers um, are going to give you, you know, really uh, in depth and um, um, expert uh, information. So um, I just want to start off uh, you know, with the um, premise of the workshop, really, and that was that, um, you know, while Neos have been were, were maligned for millennia as the vermin of space. They're really becoming um, an important focus of research and exploration. Um, we we now know that to understand origin and evolution of the solar system that we need to know a lot more than just about the, the planets and the, the larger bodies. Um, we also need to study all of the fragments and understand how material has been um, moving around in the solar system over time. Um, and so uh, Bill Botkey is going to give you a, uh, an expose on this. Um, but. Um, this is just to, uh, th as I said, this is really kind of um, to warm things up. And furthermore, while um, you know we've everybody uh, has studied and understood that um, large, devastating impacts have had uh, a major effect uh, on Earth's history, uh, mainly geological history. Um, the concept that hazardous asteroids are now are a manageable threat. Is, is really a recent construct. And when you think about it, um, it it's, it's pretty remarkable that we could be sitting in this room thinking about saving the planet um, in a way that is a lot more straightforward than trying to solve something like uh, you know, global climate change. Um, so we're going to um, hear um, a lot more about that uh, as well from, from Paul Chodas. Um, and then where the prospect of human colonization of other nearby solar system bodies is becoming more real, um, people are expending more uh, thought and energy on um, achieving that. Um, the, there's a growing focus on extraterrestrial resource extraction. We need to use what's there rather than bring everything with us. So. Um, the title of my talk, What Do We Know, What Do We Need to Know, um, is, is really the, the uh, focus of the workshop in general and not my talk. Um, but I wanted to uh, hit on a few things. Um, and that's uh, summarized on this slide are all of the asteroids that we visited with spacecraft. And um, most of them are in the main belt, Vesta um, being my favorite at the moment. Uh, <laughs> for the near-Earth asteroids, um, there's been two uh, that have been visited by spacecraft, Eros, the second largest, NEO, and uh, Itakawa, which is not uh, even a pixel on this plot. Um, and another Braille was flown by by DS-1 um, and th th is, is not represented on this slide. Now, um, we have two missions in development, uh, one to go to Bennu, uh, a primitive C-type asteroid, and do a sample return, that's the NASA uh, OSIRIS-REx mission, and also um, to JU-3, um, Hayabusa-2, funded by JAXA. So um, there is now um, more exploration in the pipeline, but you know, clearly four NEOs does not um, a, a solid understanding make especially in considering how many asteroids there are. So this is a um, fairly recent um, pictorial uh, illustration of 
the number of known asteroids, with the green being the main belt asteroids, and the, uh, the reds and the yellows being those that are um, potentially hazardous. The reds um, uh, already identified to be on Earth-crossing orbits. The yellow that could possibly per be perturbed onto Earth-crossing orbits. So, uh, so clearly, this is a population that um, we need to know more about in general if we hope to mitigate the threat of uh, impact. And as well, um, there's a, a huge number of asteroids that we don't know about um, in this vicinity. And um, I think you'll probably, uh, I hope that you'll see this later, but the difference between um, what's known now and what was known before the NEOWISE mission um, is just, it's really remarkable. So we've um, been making progress both from ground-based assets and from um, space um, very rapidly in the last decade. Um, so tracking and mitigating the asteroid threats uh, involves the ground-based observing, space-based telescopes, including NEOWISE, and, and ultimately, um, I would argue, in-situ exploration um, and manipulation. Uh, as well, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, there is a uh, great commercial interest in going to these objects, which are um, relatively accessible, and mining uh, resources, uh, presumably initially uh, to make fuel, um, volatiles, um, eventually perhaps um, for manufacturing. And there's a, 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 a large and growing um, group of uh, entrepreneurs who are getting involved in this, as well as the major players in aerospace. So the key unknowns, um, this is, uh, looks very simplistic, but I think um, it sort of underscores the fact that, that we have a big job ahead of us. Um, we need to know about the, the sizes of the objects and um, the, the albedos, their compositions. Um, from telescopic data, it's not um, straightforward to understand the difference, the, the, uh, the trade-off between the size and the albedo. Um, the volatile content is quite important, and, um, and ultimately, if we want to be able to interact with them, uh, the density, the porosity, and the structure, and all of these um, things are also of interest uh, for scientific research. So what are the emerging capabilities which, um, which are really resulting in a focus on going out and, um, and looking at these bodies up close, learning more about them, and, and starting to, to develop a, a much more nuanced view of what this population is. Um, there's been a tremendous amount of investment in nanosats, mainly the CubeSats and other uh, types of small spacecraft, and um, a, a really important emerging um, capability are these uh, trajectory design tools, which allow us to uh, design tours to understand um, how to get to places most efficiently. Microinstruments um, have been developed over the years to, um, to populate these nanosats and do uh, real science uh, with these, these smaller capable spacecraft. Um, there are new detectors which are increasing the capabilities of ground-based and ultimately space-based uh, observing systems. And then um, the recent synergy between uh, the goals of the human spaceflight program, commercial interests, and science has really, um, I think, pushed this, um, this whole area of, um, uh, of exploration further. Okay, and I just want to hit on a couple of things to illustrate the, um, my previous points. Um, later this year, these two uh, CubeSats will be launched as the first interplanetary uh, CubeSat mission, the INSPIRE mission. They are, they're ready to go and they're in hibernation waiting for a launch uh, as a secondary payload. Um, and Andy Klesch will um, be participating in our workshop as the PI of this mission. Um, and I won't go through all the, uh, the words on here, but uh, there's a couple of um, important developments on INSPIRE. One is a, uh, a deep space radio, um, which is down here at the bottom, um, and all of the, the normal um, spacecraft systems that one would need to, um, to perform a, a mission, as well as um, propulsion. 
and um, we have one instrument up here at the top, which is a, um, a vector helium magnetometer. So this is a type of, uh, of nanosat that I think um, is a, a pathfinder for what we may be able to do um, in great numbers to, to explore the NEO environment or the, the near Earth environment. Um, another mission in development is the NEA Scout, and this is a, a solar sail, um, very large um, sail for propulsion with a 6U CubeSat in the middle um, that has a camera and will be doing a flyby of um, one or more asteroids. So um, just to summarize then and get you on to uh, the, the next talks, um, I hope I made these points already that the importance of, of the NEO, of understanding NEOs is well appreciated across a, a diverse group of stakeholders. And we have uh, emerging technologies which really are giving us the opportunity to realize um, this exploration and uh, I would argue in the near term. Um, and so this workshop is really meant to try to capture where we are and then how we need to, what we need to do and how we're going to get to, to, to realize this vision. Thank you.